see in the last class uh, while we were seeing the theory of production okay we had understood that uh, basis the production a uh, firm can divide its period into a short run and a long run right and the factors of production can be classified into fixed factors and variable factors right so short run mein kya hote there are certain factors of production which are fixed and there are certain factors of production which are variable right to so fixed factors kya hote hain jo ki hum change nahi kar sakte in the short run whereas variable factors are those factors which can be changed and with the help of these factors we can either increase or decrease our production but the increase in production can be done only to the extent of the capacity of the fixed factor long run mein kya hote hain all the factors become variable and there's a there's a return to scale concept where there'll be increasing return to scale constant return to scale and then there'll be a decreasing return to scale because of economies and diseconomies of production and scale right so since we are dividing the factors of production into let's say variable and fixed production agar hum log karenge to direct consequences will be that there'll be some cost which will be incurred for doing the production activity तो अगर जब हम लोग फैक्टर्स को डिवाइड करते हैं इनटू फिक्स्ड एंड वेरिएबल राइट आवर कॉस्ट विल आल्सो फॉलो अ सिमिलर पैटर्न राइट सर्टेन कॉस्ट व्हिच विल बी इनकर्ड विल बी ऑफ अ विल बी कंसीडर्ड एज फिक्स्ड कॉस्ट राइट सर्टेन कॉस्ट व्हिच वी विल इनकर will be considered as fixed cost and certain cost which we will incur will be considered as variable cost so what do we mean by fixed cost and what do we mean by variable cost we'll see as we move on again we know that why will this be these cost will be incurred this cost will be incurred for payment of the factors of production which we will employ to hum logo ne dekha tha ki factors of production kya tha land labor capital and entrepreneur right so these were the four factors of production which will be used in any production activity so ye log koi free mein to kaam karenge nahi we'll have to pay them some remuneration for them to work right so the reward for land will be rent amount of rent which we are paying will be the reward for land लेबर का रिवॉर्ड क्या होगा व्हाट वुड दे डिमांड दे वुड डिमांड वेजेस कैपिटल का क्या रिक्वायरमेंट होगा इंटरेस्ट ऑन कैपिटल एंड व्हाट वुड द एंटरप्रेन्योर वांट राइट सो दीस विल बी द वेरियस रिवॉर्ड्स टू द वेरियस फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन एंड बिकॉज़ ऑफ दीस रिवॉर्ड्स टू दीस फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन कॉस्ट विल बी incurred and based on the nature of the factor of production be it fixed and variable there will be certain fixed cost which will be incurred and there will be certain variable cost which will be incurred right so now let us first understand that what is the concept of cost in economics right abhi tak to hum logo ne accounts mein cost ka concept samjha tha ki what do we mean by cost any expenditure which we incur is our cost so in accounting we are just concerned about inflow and outflow of money or inflow and outflow of cash if something does not have an inflow or outflow which can be denominated in terms of money can we record in accounts no if something cannot be measured in form of money that cannot be let's say recorded in the books of accounts so in accounts the concept of cost which we deal with is known as the explicit cost right so what do we mean by explicit cost it means actual money expenditure on inputs for for payment of factor services so let's say for doing our business we are buying our raw material we are employing labor we are incurring various expenses on let's say salary rent wages electricity etc etc right so all these expenses which are being paid in monetary terms will be regarded as explicit cost right so it means actual money expenditure on inputs a payment made for hiring factor services right example payment of raw material wages rent etc the key striking feature of this is that it involves actual outflow of cash these expenditures can be measured in form of money and it will entail an outflow of cash from the 
organization, right? But in economics, the concept of cost is little extended as compared to accounts. Because accounts, mein there is no concept of notional cost. Do we record notional cost? No. What do we mean by notional cost? Notional cost ka matlab hota hai an opportunity cost. Right? So, opportunity cost ka matlab kya hota hai? Let's say uh, today I am teaching here. Right? So, what is the opportunity cost of my teaching here? A job which I could have alternatively done. Right? So, that is the opportunity cost. Let's say if this is my owned premises, will I pay rent on this? No. But agar maine kya ye premises rent pe li hoti, to mere ko rent dena padta. Haan, jo bhi landlord hota, usko rent dena padta. Samaj lo ke mein sochne lagun ke bhai, thik hai, now I don't want to continue with this. Let me join some corporate and start on with that. So to continue this organization, I'll, I may have to employ some other teachers. Will they ask for salary? Yes. But am I giving salary to myself? No. So these are some costs which are notional costs, which are, let's say, because the owner of the organization is providing these inputs or services, these are not actually paid in cash, but had it been otherwise employed, would have entailed an outflow of cash, right? So these costs are known as notional cost, opportunity cost, or they may also be known as implicit cost. So jo economics ka cost ka definition hai na, isme they have taken both the thing. So economic cost is the summation of accounting cost plus the implicit cost or the opportunity cost, right? So economic cost includes actual expenditure on inputs or factor of production, which is our accounting cost or explicit cost. And the imputed value of inputs supplied by the owner. Imputed value of inputs supplied by the owner ka matlab kya? Let's say if this is my own premises, I am not paying a rent. Had I taken this premises on rent for somebody else, to ho sakta tha mere ko 40,000 per month ka rent pay karna padta. So what is that 40,000? It is an implicit cost. It is the imputed value of the input supplied by the owner, right? So economics mein cost ka definition will be explicit cost plus implicit cost. What is explicit cost? Explicit cost would otherwise also mean the accounting cost and implicit cost is the imputed value of inputs with the owner of the business has supplied to the business, right? So implicit cost ka matlab ke, it is the estimated value of input supplied by the owner including normal profit, right? Example is ka kya hai, ke uh, interest on capital, rent, salaries, whatever is payable to the owner but which is actually not being paid, right? Another important thing please remember Okay, whenever we talk about cost in economics, that cost includes normal profit. Because normally, we say kya bolte hai na, ke sales minus cost is equal to profit. But if you log ne, you would have done, let's say, chapter of revenue in your class 12 or whenever. So, what was the concept? Tha na? Average revenue is equal to average cost right so why when we say that there's a profit when average revenue is equal to average cost so we are at equilibrium when average revenue is equal to average cost because this average cost includes the amount of profit right so in economics please remember the normal profit which the entrepreneur is supposed to earn is part of the cost if the entrepreneur's revenue is more than its economic cost then he is said to earn abnormal Profits and if his revenue is less than the economic cost, then it is said that he is earning abnormal loss. But if his revenue is equal to the cost, then it means that he is earning normal profits because economics may economics cost means the actual expenditure plus the imputed value of owner derived or owner supplied uh, uh, factors of production, right? And it includes the amount of normal profit which the uh, entrepreneur would accept, right? So an entrepreneur must cover his economic cost if he wants to earn normal profit, right? So his, his revenue should be equal to his economic cost. If it is there, then it will be said that he is earning normal profit. If he is earning more than his economic cost, then it will be said that he is earning abnormal profits, right? Hence in economics, cost includes normal profit of the Entrepreneur, entrepreneur ka jo normal profit hai, wo already cost ke under included hota hai. Then, let's
let's say there are some other forms of cost which have, which have been discussed second category which they have discussed is outlay cost and opportunity cost so what do you mean by outlay cost outlay cost is the actual expenditure in terms of money which you are making what is opportunity cost opportunity cost means the cost of the next best available opportunity foregone so as i explained it if i am teaching right now here i cannot do a job and what is the opportunity cost of teaching the salary which i could have earned by doing that particular job right and so we know the distinction between outlay cost and opportunity cost second category of cost is direct or traceable cost and indirect or not traceable cost they go direct or traceable cost kya hota hai let's say if i am manufacturing a particular product the raw material required to produce that product is it a direct and a traceable cost yes because mai identify kar sakta hu ki mere ko kitna raw material chahiye kitne quantity of output ko banane ke liye if let's say some laborers are working on a particular manufacturing process will it be regarded as direct cost yes because i know that these laborers are dedicated to this particular production process but let's say ke there's a watchman which we have employed in our factory and hum log apni factory mein 20 tarah ke alag alag item banate hain so do we do you can you attribute the salary which we are paying to the watchman to a particular product no what do we need to do we need to allocate on some reasonable basis right so then these type of cost will be known as indirect cost because let's say if there is electricity in the factory and 10 different type of products are getting manufactured can you say ki kitna electricity kaun se product ke upar laga nahi these are overheads these are indirect expenses of production i'll have to use some reasonable basis to allocate it over the product but let's say in terms of raw material direct labor is there any confusion no because it is directly identifiable ki ye product banane mein itna raw material laga itna direct labor laga right then we go to the next category of cost which is the fixed cost and the variable cost right before doing that let let us understand what do we mean by the cost function theek hai last class mein hum logo ne kara tha na production function shivam what is production function it is a technological relationship between the inputs and output so what does the relationship explain so the pattern of how to distribution of the cost or obtain from the input it is state what is the maximum amount of output which can be obtained from a given quantity of input so what is the minimum quantity of input which is required to produce a given quantity of output so dekho cost function kya karta hai cost function is the relationship between cost and output right what cost will be incurred and how much output can be derived by incurring that particular cost right so cost function is the relationship between the cost and the output which says that c is function of q which says that cost of production will depend upon the quantity of output because aap jitna zyada quantity produce karoge your cost will increase the lesser quantity you produce your cost will decrease but it is not true for per unit cost right we are talking about total cost on a total cost basis as the production increases total cost increases but my average cost may fall with the increase in scale of our operations right so first let us deal with the cost which are there in short run period and then we'll move on to the cost which will be there in the long run period because production ke case mein humne dekha tha na short run is a period in which only variable factors can be changed and fixed factors will remain constant so under this how would the cost pattern behave because there will be some fixed factors of production there will be some variable factors of production right so agar main aapko example do fixed factor of production mein let's say let us take an example constant that we have a factory we are paying a rent of 1 lakh rupees in that factory hum log wahan pe kya karte hain shirt manufacture karte hain so let's say what is the rent matlab that is 1 lakh rupees per month agar samjho ek mahine maine 10000 shirt manufacture kare main kitna rent pay karunga samjho maine 5000 shirt manufacture kare to kitna parunga if i don't manufacture anything so this is a fixed cost this will remain constant over a period of time and it is payable to the fixed factors of production because we say that changing a premises 
it will take a longer period of time and that's a relative concept how much time will it take will depend upon the nature of the business right so remuneration paid to the fixed factors of production is known as fixed cost and the fixed cost will remain constant at all level of production whether i produce something i don't produce something whether i make a huge production whether i make a mediocre production does not matter that cost will remain constant right so fixed cost which do not the cost which do not vary directly with the level of output is known as fixed cost example rent of the premises can somebody give me some other example salary of permanent employees depreciation what else interest on loans which we but then it will depend upon our level of operations na hum kitna loan lenge but if it is for let's say the loan is taken for funding a fixed asset then it will remain constant and then interest will also become fixed cost something like let's say annual maintenance cost मशीनरी यूज करे के नहीं करे मेंटेनेंस तो मेरे को करवाना पड़ेगा अदरवाइज माय मशीनरीज में नॉट फंक्शन राइट सो दिस विल बी लाइक सम प्रॉपर्टी टैक्सेस व्हिच वी नीड टू पे अगर केएमसी को टैक्स पे करना है तो दे विल नॉट कंसीडर व्हेदर आप प्रोडक्शन कर रहे हो के नहीं कर रहे हो दैट टैक्स इज सपोज्ड टू बी पेड राइट सो फिक्स कॉस्ट रिमेंस कांस्टेंट एट ऑल लेवल ऑफ आउटपुट इवन एट जीरो लेवल ऑफ आउटपुट द सेम अमाउंट ऑफ फिक्स कॉस्ट विल बी incurred right it is it is irrespective of the volume of your operations right so when we talk about fixed cost we have seen it with the help of a diagram where the output increases from 0 to 5 but the total fixed cost remains constant at all level of output so what will happen what will be the slope of the total fixed cost curve because one unit pe bhi 12 lag raha hai two units pe bhi 12 three units 12 four units 12 five units whatever number of units are there i am incurring a fixed cost of 12 so our fixed cost curve is a horizontal straight line parallel to x axis and another key feature that it will start from any point on the y axis because even at zero level of output there will be some fixed cost which will be incurred theek okay? hai then we move on to the variable cost variable cost kya hota hai these are some cost which vary directly with the level of output let's say if i want to produce 100 shirts to mere ko 100 shirts ka raw material lagega if i want to produce 1000 shirts to mere ko 1000 shirts ka raw material lagega and if i don't want to produce anything mere ko koi bhi raw material lene ki zarurat nahi hai right so this these are some costs which will vary directly with the level of operation let's say if i am using contract laborers मतलब मेरे शर्ट को आयरन करके पैक करने का मैं फाइव रुपीज पर पीस दे रहा हूँ तो मेरा एक्सपेंडिचर कितना होगा जितने पीस मैं आयरन करके पैक कर रहा इफ आई एम पैकिंग जीरो पीसेस आई डोंट हैव टू पे एनीथिंग इफ आई एम पैकिंग हंड्रेड पीसेस आई पे हंड्रेड इंटू फाइव इफ आई एम गेटिंग पैक थाउजेंड पीसेज आई पे थाउजेंड इंटू फाइव राइट सो दीज कॉस्ट विल बी सच दैट दे वेरी डिरेक्टली विद द लेवल ऑफ आउटपुट समथिंग लाइक रॉ मटीरियल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट लेबर एनी अदर एग्जाम्पल वो तो कर लिया ना मैंने कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी डू यू थिंक इट्स अ वेरिएबल कॉस्ट यस सर इट्स अ फ्री सी वेरिएबल कॉस्ट कैन अगेन बी डिवाइडेड इनटू टू कैटेगरीज हां इट्स सम कॉस्ट विल बी कंप्लीटली वेरिएबल लाइक जो मैंने आपको एग्जांपल दिया कि जितने पीसेस पैक कराएंगे उतने पीस के पैसे देने पड़ेंगे देयर विल बी सम कॉस्ट व्हिच विल बी नोन एज सेमी वेरिएबल कॉस्ट सेमी वेरिएबल कॉस्ट मतलब कि अगर आपने इलेक्ट्रिक कनेक्शन लिया है ना तो आपको उतना पैसा तो और आई कैन टेक अ बेटर एग्जांपल ऑल ऑफ यू यूज मोबाइल फोन पोस्टपेड कनेक्शन है तो आप लोग क्या करोगे अगर फोन करो के ना करो रेंटल तो पे करना ही पड़ेगा राइट तो टू द ट्यून ऑफ रेंटल योर कॉस्ट इज फिक्स देन बेसिस ऑन व्हाटएवर कॉल्स यू मेक योर एक्सपेंडिचर विल इंक्रीज सो दिस इज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ सेमी वेरिएबल कॉस्ट where to an extent the cost is remaining fixed and after that as you are using it your cost is increasing so electricity ke case mein kya hoga na ke let's say the meter rent and minimum consumption charge will always be there then it will depend whether you are consuming units or not right so so what it says is that such cost 
are incurred till there is production and before and become zero at zero level of output. So let us see it with the help of a diagram where it says that output increase from zero to five and total variable cost increase from zero to six, 10, 15, 24, 35, right? So this, as we plot it on a graph, we get a curve which is an inversely S shaped curve. See, before we discuss more on this, some logo ne kal production mein dekha tha that law of variable proportions operate. Law of variable proportions kya bolta tha? Initially, the output will increase at an increasing rate. So when output try and correlate it with cost, huh? when my output is increasing at an increasing rate, what are we saying that there are a lot of efficiencies and my cost per unit will fall, right? When output will increase at an increasing rate, there are a lot of efficiencies and my cost per unit would fall. Then eventually what was happening? The output was increasing at a decreasing rate and then at a negative rate. So ye phase mein mera cost kaise behave karega? The cost per unit will increase because of inefficiencies. The output is increasing but not at an increasing rate but at a decreasing rate. So the cost per unit increasing increases. So dekho law of variable proportion is e since it is applicable on production, it will automatically become applicable on cost. Because if production increases at an increasing rate, cost per unit keeps on falling. But when production increases at a decreasing rate, what would happen? The cost per unit will start increasing, right? So here the shape of the variable cost curve is an inverse S shape curve. Why? Because of law of variable proportions because initially the cost will increase at a decreasing rate and then the cost will increase at an increasing rate, right? So, pele 0 to 6, right? Then 6 to 4, what is the difference? 4. 10 to 5, 5. 5 to 24, 9. And then this is 11. So, what is happening? The variable cost is increasing at an increasing rate rate, right? So that is why the shape of the curve will be an inverse S shape curve. Right? So, this is an inverse S shape curve because of law of variable proportion and this variable cost curve will start from the origin because at zero level of output my variable cost will be zero. Then we talk about semi variable cost. Semi variable cost kya hota hai? Ke these are neither perfectly variable nor absolutely fixed. Some proportion of the cost is fixed and some proportion is variable. So the fixed proportion will be a parallel line uh, to the x-axis and the variable proportion will be an inverse S-shape curve, right? Then there are some costs which are step-up costs. Jaysay kya hota na? The best example is electricity. Electricity mein kya hota hai? Okay, let's say minimum, let's say you have to pay 1000 rupees as the charge. Then from 0 to 500 units, you will be charged at the rate of let's say 10 per unit. Then from 501 to 1000 units, you will be charged at 12 per unit. And then from 1000 to 2000 units, you will be charged at 15 per unit. So what is happening that as your consumption is rising, the cost per unit is also rising, right? So such costs are known as step up variable cost, right? Or stair step up, uh, step variable cost. And it will be something like this to till a particular level it will remain constant then again rise then it will remain constant and again rise so this is how a stair step up cost would look like right 
देन वी मूव ऑन टू दी कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ टोटल कॉस्ट देखो कॉस्ट दो तरह के होते हैं फिक्स कॉस्ट एंड वेरिएबल कॉस्ट सो टोटल कॉस्ट इज दी समेशन ऑफ आर फिक्स कॉस्ट एंड वेरिएबल कॉस्ट सो टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर इनकर्ड बाय अ फर्म ऑन फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन इज नोन एज टोटल कॉस्ट टोटल कॉस्ट इज इक्वल टू टोटल फिक्स कॉस्ट प्लस वेरिएबल कॉस्ट कैन यू टेल मी व्हाट वुड ब्रिंग अबाउट अ चेंज इन टोटल कॉस्ट टोटल वेरिएबल कॉस्ट व्हाई because at all level of output in the short run my fixed cost will remain constant what will change is variable cost so so a change in the total cost will be brought about only by change in variable cost right since total fixed cost remains fixed at all level of output the change in total cost is entirely due to total variable cost right so taking the un uh, same unit that we had taken earlier output increases from 0 to 5 total fixed cost is 12 and our total variable cost is increasing at an increasing rate so what will happen the summation of total fixed cost and total variable cost will give us total cost right so when we plot this on a graph we see that our total fixed cost is a horizontal straight line parallel to x axis because at all level of output it remains constant our variable cost curve will start from the origin and it will be an inversed s shaped curve because initially the cost increases at a decreasing rate and then the variable cost increases at an increasing rate and summation of total fixed cost and total variable cost is our total cost right so our total cost will invariably start at the point from where our total fixed cost will start why because even at zero level of output there will be some fixed cost which will be incurred and at zero level of output our total fixed cost is equal to total cost right then what we will see is that the vertical distance between the total cost curve and total variable cost curve will remain the same they are known as parallel curves right parallel curves kyun bolte hain because the distance between them will always remain constant why will the distance between them remain constant because at all level of output tfc is constant because hum log bolte hain na ke our formula says that tc is equal to tfc plus tvc right so what it says is that tc minus acha tvc minus tc is equal to total fixed cost right tc minus tvc is equal to total fixed cost so the vertical distance between the total cost curve and total variable cost curve is the total fixed cost and fixed cost remains constant at all level of output so these total cost curve and total variable cost will be parallel curves as the vertical distance between them will remain constant what what do you what can you comment between the distance between the total fixed co uh, total fixed cost curve and total cost curve it will keep on increases because as the output increases the vertical distance between the total fixed cost and the total cost curve increases because of change in the total variable cost right so important relationship which we note in this case is that total cost is an inversely s shaped curve why because it derives its shape from tvc because tc the change in tc tvc is uh, is the result of the change in tc so and because of this because of this is because of law of variable proportions tc is equal to tfc at zero level of output because there will be some fixed cost which will always be there right the tc and tvc curves are parallel to each other as the vertical distance between them is tfc which remains constant at all level of output vertical distance between tfc and tc is equal to tvc the difference between tc and tfc curve goes on increasing because our total variable cost keeps on increasing are you clear about these relationships it's very important just to remember these relationships agar ye yaad hai theek se to koi bhi mcu questions ho jayenge ठीक है तो अभी तक हम लोगों ने जो कॉन्सेप्ट्स करे थे ना दीज कॉन्सेप्ट वर अबाउट टोटल कॉस्ट कॉन्सेप्ट बिकॉज वी वर लुकिंग एट टोटल फिक्स कॉस्ट टोटल वेरिएबल कॉस्ट एंड टोटल कॉस्ट बट द मोर मीनिंगफुल इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ एनीथिंग 
will always be come when we talk about average, right? So if I tell you that I undertook some production activity and I incurred a cost of one lakh rupees, right? And she undertook uh, uh, some production activity and she incurred a cost of ten lakh rupees, right? Who is better? Depends on what. Right. So it depends upon output, right? It depends upon the output because maybe ke isne 10 lakh pieces jo bana, uh, 10 lakh incur karke she produced 10 lakh unit her cost per unit was 1 whereas I incurred let's say 1 lakh rupees and I produced 10,000 units of the same product and my cost per unit was 10 right so the best measure of gauging whether the cost which have been incurred is efficient not efficient etc will be to look at it from the average cost perspective right so average cost again since we have fixed cost variable cost and total cost we'll have average fixed cost average variable cost and average total cost so what is average fixed cost average fixed cost is per unit of fixed cost right so total fixed cost divided by the quantity which is produced will be known as average fixed cost right so continuing with the same example output was zero and then we increase it till five total fixed cost at each unit of production remain the same. What is average fixed cost? Average fixed cost is total fixed cost divided by quantity, right? So at zero level of output, we have a fixed cost of 12 and 12 divided by zero, right? Any positive value divided by zero will be equal to infinite, right? Then as we see, our average cost is continuously falling. Why? Because the numerator is remaining the same and the denominator is increasing. So as production increases, our average fixed cost keeps on falling, right? So when we plot this on a graph, we see that the average fixed cost curve is a rectangular hyperbola, right? So AFC curve slopes downward as AFC falls with increase in output. As the output increases, this x-axis is our output right and this is our average fixed cost in terms of rupees right so as output is increasing our average fixed cost is also increasing the shape or the slope of the curve is that it's a rectangular hyperbola and area under any point under this curve will be always same can AFC touch any point on y axis why Right, because at zero level of output, the value which AFC will derive is infinite and will never touch Y axis. Can it touch any point on X axis? No, why? Because fixed cost will, average fixed cost will always be a positive variable. Why? Because two positive numbers, when we divide two positive numbers, the answer cannot be zero, right? So. This approaches both x-axis and y-axis but never touches them. Reason why it never touches them, TFC can never touch x-axis as TFC can never be zero, right? Ye TFC likhiya na, it will be. Right, AFC can never touch x-axis or y-axis as TFC can never be zero or AFC can never be zero, right? AFC can never touch x-axis as at zero level of output, AFC is an infinite value. So it's a rectangular hyperbola. It will neither touch x-axis nor it will touch y-axis. At zero level of output, it is infinite. At, let's say, it can nev never touch x-axis because the average can never be zero. Okay? Let's move on to the uh, average variable cost. Average variable cost is the cost per unit of variable cost of production, which says that AVC is equal to TVC divided by the quantity of output, right? So if, if we see that the quantities increase from 0 to 5, our average variable cost will show a trend, sorry, va variable cost will show a trend where it will first increase at a decreasing rate and then increase at an increasing rate. And this is our average variable cost. So what will be the shape of the average variable cost curve? 
it will be a U shaped curve. Why? Because initially it decreases and then it starts increasing, right? Because initially average will fall because of falling variable cost and as my variable cost starts increasing, the average variable cost curve also starts increasing. So there will be three phase, phases in which uh, our average variable cost will go through. It will be a decreasing phase which will be the initial phase, then the constant phase when the cost will become constant and then the increasing phase when the variable cost starts increasing, right? So please remember the shape of the curve, average variable cost curve is a U-shaped curve, right? Then we move on to the average total cost. Right, average total cost is the total cost of production divided by the total quantity produced. Right, average total cost is equal to total cost divided by average uh, by the quantity produced. Or in other words, we can say that it is the summation of average fixed cost and average variable cost. Right, so again using the same uh, figures which we had taken, the output increased from 0 to 5. Initially, the average fixed cost was infinite and it started decreasing as the output increased. Average variable cost initially decreases, it becomes constant and then it starts increasing, right? And average cost is the summation of average fixed cost and average variable cost. When we plot the average cost curve on a graph, we see that it is also a U-shaped curve. Why? Because initially the average cost decreases, it becomes constant and then it starts increasing, right? So if we, if we look at the three phases, what we see that initially what happens, that my average fixed cost bhi gir rahe or average variable cost bhi gir rahe. That is why my average cost will fall steeply in the initial phase because both the variables on which my average cost is dependent upon falls, right? My average fixed cost also falls and my average variable cost also falls. Then what happens in the second phase, my average fixed cost will keep on falling, but my average variable cost will become constant, right? So here at this level, it becomes more or less constant. Then what will happen in the next phase, what will happen that the average variable, average fixed cost will continue to fall, but my average variable cost will uh, start increasing, right? And at a level where the increase in my average variable cost is more than the decrease in my average fixed cost, the average cost curve will start increasing. There will be two phase. My AFC falls, but average variable cost increases. But the fall in average fixed cost is greater than the fall than increase in my average variable cost, the average cost curve will still fall, right? Because let's say if my average fixed cost falls by 3 and my average variable cost falls by 2, my average cost will in effect fall by 1. But then there will be a time where my average fixed cost falls and my average variable cost increases, but fall in average fixed cost is less then the increase in average variable cost which will lead to increase in the average cost curve, right? So remember these two phases. Pehle kya hoga? Ke average fixed cost and average variable cost both will fall. So average cost curve will fall steeply. Then what will happen? My average fixed cost will keep on falling and average variable cost will increase. But the fall in average fixed cost is greater than the fall in, uh, then increase in variable cost Right, so my curve keeps on falling, declining. Then there will be a phase where my average fixed cost falls, but the increase in average variable cost is greater than the fall in average fixed cost, and that is the point when my average cost curve starts rising. Right. So phase two may they go average fixed cost continues to fall, but average fixed cost, average variable cost remains constant. Right, and what will happen? My average cost will fall. Fall in average fixed cost increases uh, is equal to increase in average variable cost. It will lead to a position where my average cost curve is constant. Because if fall in variable cost, sorry, fall in average cost, average fixed cost is equal to fall in average variable cost, there will be a change of 
जीरो देन राइजिंग फेस में क्या होगा दैट इन राइज इन एवरेज वेरिएबल कॉस्ट इज मोर देन द फोल्ड इन ए एफ सी वॉट विल हैपन माई ए सी विल राइज राइट सो दीज आर इंपॉर्टेंट रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन दी वेरियस कॉस्ट कर्व्स इफ यू प्लॉट ऑल दीज थ्री कर्व्स टूगेदर राइट दिस is our average fixed cost curve which is a rectangular hyperbola this avc is a u shaped curve and this ac is also a u shaped curve see what we see is that average cost curve will always be above avc why because the difference is afc average variable cost curve se hamesha average cost curve will be upar why because the distance between them is afc Will they ever intersect? No. no. Why? A F C cannot become zero. As the output increases, they will become closer and closer, but they will never intersect because my average fixed cost will never become zero, right? So A B C reaches its minimum point at a level of output lower than A C because when A B C is at its minimum point, A C is still falling because of falling A F C. But AFC will keep on falling, so ABC will reach at its minimum point earlier than the average cost. Because जब ABC minimum है तब फिर भी यहाँ पे average fixed cost गिर रहा है and what is happening? The AC falls. But when increase in ABC is greater than the fall in AFC, my average cost will rise. As output increases, gap between AC and ABC curves decreases, but they never intersect. as the vertical distance between them is afc which can never be zero right then we go to the next concept of marginal cost marginal cost ka concept the marginal is always addition because of one additional unit right so here when we talk about marginal cost we'll be talking about addition to total cost when one more unit of output is purchased right addition to total cost when one more unit of output is purchased right so marginal cost of nth unit is equal to total cost of nth unit minus total cost of n minus 1 unit right when the change is more than one you have all, always seen that change in total cost divided by change in total quantity will give me the marginal cost marginal cost is not affected by change uh, change in fixed cost why because fixed cost is always constant and marginal cost is what change in total cost and change in total cost is brought about because of variable cost right so again our uh, marginal cost curve will also be a u shaped curve because it derives its shape from total variable cost and there is a law of variable proportion which is operating so if we see the relationship between average cost curve and marginal cost curve right what we will see is that both are u shaped curve right and then once we compare them so we don't have a ठीक है, when we see it, it is seen that when marginal cost is less than average cost, the average cost will fall, right? When marginal cost is less than average cost, the average cost will fall. ठीक है व्हेन माय मार्जिनल कॉस्ट इज लेस देन माय एवरेज कॉस्ट माय एवरेज कॉस्ट विल फॉल ये कल भी हम लोगों ने सेम रिलेशनशिप समझा था कि व्हेन माय मार्जिनल कॉस्ट इंक्रीजेस व्हाट विल हैपन माय एवरेज कॉस्ट विल आल्सो इंक्रीज व्हेन माय मार्जिनल कॉस्ट डिक्रीजेस माय एवरेज कॉस्ट विल आल्सो डिक्रीज 
Right, so when my marginal cost is less than my average cost, the average cost will fall. When the marginal cost is equal to average cost, right, when MC and AC curve intersect each other, AC is constant, right, and at minimum and at minimum point it cuts from the downward, right. So marginal cost curve will cut the average cost curve from downward, and at this this point they will be equal. Marginal cost, when marginal cost is greater than average cost, obviously the the average cost will rise. And when marginal cost and average cost curve rises, which will rise faster? The marginal cost. So marginal cost curve will be a steeper curve as compared to the average cost curve. Right, then we move to the next section which talks about long run cost curves. Okay. Long run may consta theory apply karta hai. short run may be apply a theory of law of variable proportions. Whereas in long run, the theory of return to scales apply. So long run kya hota hai? it's a reasonably big period wherein I'll be able to optimize my cost. Kalam log kar rahe na, where cost is optimized, we draw a budget line, right, and then an ISO quant, then an ISO quant goes through the thing and we determine the point which is the cost of lower production. So, in the long run, mein always a producer tries to minimize his total cost because the time is sufficient enough to make any adjustment possible, right? So, long run cost of production is the least possible cost of production at any given level of output when all individual factors are variable. Because all individual factors are variable, I'll choose that combination of input which will give me the lowest possible cost of production, right? So, a long run cost curve depicts the functional relationship between the output and the long run cost of production, right? So, now what we'll do, we'll try to understand it with the help of certain short run average cost curves, right? What it says is, Let's say there are see what it says that in short run what will happen is that a producer will have various short run cost curves and he will derive that or he will try to operate on that particular short run cost curve which will give him the minimum cost of production, right? In the short run, let's say if a producer has sh various short run cost curves based on the level of his operations, based on the level of output which he is trying to produce, he will choose a particular short run cost curve, right? So, if you understand that output level here, or here, or here, or here, Right, I will choose a suitable cost curve which will give me a level of output. See, but in but again in short run there is a constraint because I cannot go beyond the capacity of my fixed factors. So agar samaj lo ke mera lowest cost of production yahan pe aa hai, but mere jo factors hai, right, fixed factors that allow me to produce only till here. Will I be able to produce on this particular SAC? No, because my capacities are constrained in the short run based on the maximum input which a output which I can produce I'll have to choose a suitable short run average cost curve but then in the long run there are no constraint I can adjust my pro, uh, my production to whatever level which is required and I can choose a suitable short run cost curve which will give me the lowest cost of production right so if let's say if I want to produce at point a which is here which short run cost curve will I use and which uh, on which will I produce? Why? See, because if I am producing at this point, right, as I move on, mira cost yaha pe hai and as I move on, I hit the SAC to here. Right, so at this point, what will I choose? I will choose to produce at this point, let's say point L, right, and let's say this is point H. 
if i am wanting to produce a unit of quantity right what uh, short run cost curve will i choose i will choose short run cost curve 1 sac 1 by because here my cost of production is lowest i will not go to sac 2 but let's say if i want to produce at the level of point b here which short run cost curve will i choose I will use SAC 2 because यहाँ पे SAC 2 में ये पहले intersect हो रहा है, उसके बाद it is going to SAC 1, right? So what I am trying to do, I am trying to optimize my cost based on deferring my level of output. But अगर समझो short run में मेरा level of output A ही है, इस A से ज़्यादा मैं produce नहीं कर सकता हूँ. Can I go forward? No. But long run do I have a liberty to do this? Yes. So what will a producer do? A producer will draw different short-run average cost curve, and he'll try to choose that particular short-run cost curve where he can make optimal amount of production at the minimum cost. Right. So and as we move on, let's say if I want to produce here at point C, what will happen? If I draw a line from here, it goes here, and then it comes till here. So if I short-run, me, समझो मैं S A C one पे operate कर रहा हूँ. Right. So, is this an optimal level? No, because my cost of production will increase. Secondly, I may not have a capacity to produce till year as well. Or if capacity be hai, tab bhi it is better to produce at I think level B because year my cost of production will be less as compared to C. So, at this point, what will I choose? I will choose to produce at point K rather than producing at point J. Because here the cost of production will high. So what are we trying to do in this case? What we are trying to do is that we are trying to choose that particular short-run cost curve which will minimize our cost of production, right? Since because in the long run, what are we having? We are having various options to adjust our inputs and outputs to a suitable scale. So what will, in actual practice, a producer do, right? A producer will have let's say n number of short run cost curves right so so there are n number of short run cost curves which are available to a producer in a long run what he will do he'll draw his long run average cost curve as an envelope curve right wo kya karega he will draw a long run average cost curve which will be tangent Right, he'll draw a long-run cost curve, which will be tangent to various points on the short-run cost curve, and based on the level of output he wants to produce, he will choose a suitable level. यहाँ पे देखो, let's say if he wants to produce at level, at this level of production F, which curve will he choose? He'll choose SAC two because at this level his cost of production is least. अगर वो आगे जाता है तो ही मैं हैव टू गो टू एस एस वन विच विल लीड टू अ ग्रेटर कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्शन राइट अगेन इफ यू वॉन्ट्स टू प्रोड्यूस एट दिस लेवल ही चूज एस एस सी थ्री इफ यू हैव टू प्रोड्यूस एट दिस लेवल राइट दिस इज लेट से क्यू एंड दिस इज पी एंड लेट से ही मे हैव टू ही चूज टू प्रोड्यूस एट दिस लेवल then it will be let's say w and t what would a producer do under cer these circumstances which level of output will he choose to produce p q y o q level of output
then he choose to produce OQ level of output at the point P at the total average cost of P. Why will he not choose to be your? Because that will be under utilization of resources. Because if he can produce here, he has still has a capacity to reach this point and minimize his cost, right? So if he is somewhere around here, around here, what will it depict? It will depict under utilization of resources which are available. Because if I produce more, I can enjoy economies of scale and I can reduce my cost of production. Whereas what will happen when he produces on the right of this particular point? It is over utilization of capacities. It is it is resulting into diseconomies of scale. And because of diseconomies of scale, the cost of production is rising. So ye wala jo situation ye hai. Economies of scale if he is moving towards this side. And from here to this side, if he is moving, he is attaining diseconomies of scale. Okay. Then when we talk about this envelope curve, this long run average cost curve is also known as an envelope curve. Do you think that this curve is tangent to the lowest point in each of these SSEs? Then? how it works is that LAC is not tangent at the lowest point in the uh, short run average cost curve. In this particular phase before the optimal level, the long run average cost curve is tangent to the falling SAC, not at the lowest point. Maybe this is the lowest point. Where is it tangent? Here. It is tangent to the falling SAC, right? Even here it is tangent to the falling SAC, but here it is tangent to the lowest point and then beyond this particular point, it is ten tangent to the rising side of the short run average cost curves, right? So it says that LAC is not tangent to the minimum point on SAC curves when LAC declines, right? When LAC declines, matlab when LAC is falling, it is tangent to the falling portion of the SSE. When LSE is rising, it is tangent to the rising portion of the SSE. It is not tangent always with the minimum point on short run average cost curves. Right, and the shape of the curve is U shape. Why? Because of law of huh? variable proportion. Na, ye MCU question aane wale hai. That LAC curve is a U-shaped curve because of law of variable proportions and all of you will mark true. It is because of law of return to scale because law of variable proportion is applicable only in short run. The U-shape I portion bola tha na, aap ko ka, which I assume that nobody has read. <laughs> economies and diseconomies. Sometimes I tend to take risk that students are like very diligent and they will do that. Right. So the economies or diseconomies of scale mein kya hota hai? Ke initially as the scale of operation increases, your cost per unit will decrease because the economies of large scale production are available to you. But after a particular point of time, these economies will be converted into this economies, right? So, yahan tak mere wo economies of scale enjoy kar raha hon. This is known as the optimal level of production. Beyond this point, my economies of scales are getting converted into this economies and producing beyond this point will not be suitable because it increases my cost per unit, right? So this is applicable because of economies and diseconomies of scale, the U shape of long run average cost curve. But do you think this operates in actual life? 
Do you think it operates in actual life? Yes. Tab reliance ka bhi reliance nahi banta. And its profit would have never grown. Then Tata's would have only small factories. They would have never grown because if, if there would have been this economies of scale. In practical life, this is not applicable. Right. It may be applicable to some organizations which are disorganized and which are not able to, let's say, handle the scale of its operation. But actual life, mein kya hota hai na? the state of technology keeps on improving always. The production processes, the, let's say, operation, procedures, etc., they have a complete shift, they have complete improvement over the time. So this is not what our long run average cost curve would look like. But in a practical scenario, our long run average cost curve would look something like this. Matlab kya? Ke jab aap ka business chota tha tab aap yahan pe the, then what happened? As you, in, it will be a little steeper. Theke, as you increased your operation, your and you, you got the economies of scale, your cost fell significantly. Then a prudent enterprise would either try to maintain its cost or because of improvement in technologies, procedures, etc., its cost may slowly decline. It will not have a U-shaped curve, right? It will not have a U-shaped curve. It will have a curve something like this. It is known as an L shaped curve. This is known as the L shaped curve. Right? So uh, by this we are done with uh, the theory of cost. Again see there are certain important MCQ questions which could arise from between the lines. Okay? So I tried to cover it as much as possible. But the long run cost curve ke area, may you just give it a read. Because there are various cases they are using uh, terms such as there are certain plants which are there and then in long run you can have various plants which you can use. The long run average cost curve is also known as an envelope curve. Right? So these things of just just couple of points which you will uh, get from there. Right? Just take uh, take a note of it. Take it. Something like a U-shaped curve, then an L-shaped curve, etc.